right now on Fox. No tokens necessary. This ride is on us as the Subway unites crosstown rivals. Some of the faces may have changed, but make no mistake, it's the same old line. Big Apple turf war with pride at the core. And while the series for now, we got to get you out to your ball games. Since the birth of interleague play, the boys from the Bronx have never lost a season series to the other guys. But the Mets say this time it's different. And speaking of change, the Phillies have been without two starting pitchers for most of the past month. Today they get one back. There's a wolf loose at Fenway. We will keep you updated. It is Fox Saturday Baseball, your game of the week. New York, whether it's the Empire State Building, Times Square, or peering over into the Bronx in Yankee Stadium, we welcome you to the Fox Saturday Baseball Game of the Week. Crosstown rivals, the New York Mets, taking on the New York Yankees. Tim, I know it's customary for the starting pitcher to warm up in the bullpen and then come in and have a seat on the dugout bench, but why not just walk right in from the bullpen, stop at the pitching mound, let Mel Stottlemyre just continue into the dugout, and away we go. Because Brad Halsey's only his second major league start, and his inexperience is already showing up. I mean, he's a little late. A 125 start. He still has to go take a seat. What's the, what, 30 seconds? How long? What's a good sit? 30 seconds, 40 well, I'd seconds? I'd say a minute from now. A now. Right. Take a look at the first start for Brad Halsey. We were there last weekend at Dodger Stadium. Got his first major league hit. Ran right through the bag, and he got a souvenir. And he also got the victory. Joe Torre so impressed with his ability to work inside to both right-handed and left-handed hitters, and here he is getting another start while the Yankees hope Kevin Brown in about a week or so can come back into this Yankee starting rotation. Got to have a seat. You've got to sit down. It's part of Major League Baseball's unwritten rules. Water. Water. More water. Never anticipated somebody sitting down more than I am right now. He's not even going to get a chance to. That's what happens when you're late. Let's take a look at the lineup for the New York Mets. Jose Reyes, one of the best talents to come through this city in a long time. Just turned 21, leads it off. Matsui. Mike Piazza, Cliff Floyd, Richard Hidalgo picked up from the Houston Astros. Mike Cameron, Ty Wigginton, Todd Zeal at first. And it's Jason Phillips doing the catching and batting in the number nine spot. Here is Brad Halsey. Winning his Major League debut last Saturday at Dodger Stadium. And as Joe was, Joe intimated, uh, aggressive in the strike zone and no fear of pitching inside. Uh, the, the one guy that he'll have to perhaps rethink in that med lineup is Mike Piazza, who is a powerful hitter on balls inside. But it, it's common sense that young players, when they're successful in the minor leagues, and he is 29 and 12 in his minor league career over three years that they get to the big leagues and they're intimidated in throwing strikes. They, they work around the strike zone and not in the strike zone. Not so Halsey. And I would say if you didn't know about this Mets team or where they stand in their division you might not be intimidated to take on the New York Mets and we'll wait and see how Halsey works against them. It's an interesting thought that Cliff Floyd gives us about where the Mets stand in their division. And he asked the question, why not us in 2004? The NL East lost Vladimir Guerrero, Gary Sheffield, uh, Greg Maddox, uh, Javier Vasquez. Those type of names left the NL East on, on not our team. So for us to sit there and say that, uh, you know, it's not wide open, it'd be crazy. It'd be, it'd be silly for us to go out there and just Look at it as another season, you know, well, you know, we hadn't gotten better. We have gotten better. Javi Lopez, another name that left the division now with the Baltimore Orioles, and Cliff Floyd is in the lineup today for Art Howe. And as we said at the top, the Mets come in a game under 500. That's not great, but to back up Cliff's point, the division is wide open. Starting the day, only three games out behind the Marlins 
in the NL East. The Subway Series, it has been dominated by the Yankees, who have won the last seven. And if you go back to the year 2000, the Yankees beat the Mets four games to one in the World Series that year. Jose Reyes. An electrifying young player. Went out in the middle part of March with hamstring trouble. Then in coming back and trying to learn a different way to run, injured his back. He's in the lineup and he takes a strike. I was just going to say with the problems that Reyes has had with his hamstring and his hip. He will not be inclined to bunt. Too many things can happen. Oh and two. You have to love the comments by the participants in a series like this. The players. Almost dreading. When these weekends arrive, it's this weekend and next weekend at Shea. And they always talk about the hassle that it provides these players and that it's a lot of hurdles they have to get through. There's a grounder foul outside third, but then they always say the most important sentence of the entire piece, and that is, well, it is for the fans. It is. The fans enjoy it, and they're already having fun here the first moments of this game. It's an odd take on things. I mean, that's uh, that's the reason that everyone should enjoy it. Two balls, two strikes on Reyes. Players don't have to get on a, an airplane. They take a bus across town. I mean, come on. 2-2. Two -two. Reaching for it. Reyes trying to battle. Not only is Reyes in the leadoff spot, but... Kaz Matsui is batting in the number two position and he's been much more effective from that two spot in Art Howe's lineup when he's had a chance to this season. It was interesting to read the progress that Reyes was making or lack of progress as he was trying to learn a new way to run which seems virtually impossible to pick up. I don't think I've ever heard of that particularly during the season. One out. After a bevy of fastballs the breaking ball gets Reyes ideally thrown just off the plate to the young Reyes. Defensively for the Yankees not that great. 11 in the American League in fielding percentage they've committed 53 errors. The Mets on the other hand dead last with 62 as a ball club. Matsui fouls it and Kaz Matsui has drawn the wrath and the ire of fans over at Shea Stadium because so far it has been a struggle for him here in the States and playing in New York not only at the plate as he pops it up but even more so defensively. Two out. Fifteen errors. Tied for the most in the major leagues with Melvin Mora. That is a key defensive position. Shortstop. Particularly again and we go back to the opening. Particularly with this pitching staff that throws a lot of ground balls. Here's Piazza. Ball one from Halsey. Mike Piazza is a career 355 hitter during interleague play. 370 career home runs. And a right center field slicing away from Williams and that's an extra base hit. Piazza will cruise into second. He has a two out double. Oh did he crush that ball. That ball was hit so hard that Bernie Williams took two steps to his left and it was by him. Tremendous strength. Two steps boom. And ever since Piazza came into his own with the Dodgers we've been talking about his tremendous power the opposite way. Hmm. Most right handed hitters who hit a ball to right field the ball will tail on them 
That ball didn't have a chance to tail. Hit too hard. Now it's up to Cliff Floyd, who is hitting 314 with runners in scoring position this season. Strike one. 294 overall, seven home runs, 27 RBIs. All sorts of leg trouble the past couple of years trying to stay healthy and stay in this lineup for the Mets. Very good player who came up with the Expos. Some good years with the Marlins. That's strike two. And there's Halsey coming inside on a left handed batter. Halsey made his major league debut on national television at Dodger Stadium last week. And he looks about as calm as he did last Saturday with his first home start at Yankee Stadium. and the Mets all the money that's been thrown around to bring these players to these two franchises and so far at the start of the season in the top 10 in the hitting categories of average home runs and RBIs only one guy is represented among the league leaders for each league and that's Alex Rodriguez number two in the American League in home runs otherwise neither team has anybody on any list a lead off walk. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Derek. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> J-E-T-T-E-R. Mr. Jetter stands in celebrating his 30th birthday. What he has packed in to his big league career shouldn't be overlooked and I fear I do it just like everybody else take for granted the kind of consistency granted he started this season not hitting well but nobody's been hitting any better the end of May through now he's hitting 389 overall his average is up to 256 and by the end of the season he will have his usual Jeter numbers a check on Williams at first Bernie has not even attempted a stolen base this season. One out. Into center. Two on, nobody out. Joe Torre said, I never thought I'd be sitting here telling you that Jeter has the potential to hit 20 home runs, but he said he is absolutely crushing the ball. And since the end of May, there are the numbers with eight of his 11 home runs. He is the only man in Major League history with the nickname Mr. O Mr. November. That's right. 2001, because of 9-1-1, the World Series starting later that year, the season pushed back. And the most dramatic World Series in the history of the game, in my view. For Jeter, his career high 24 home runs. He did that in 99. He has 11 so far this season. But I think Joe Torre thought those days of big power numbers were behind Derek Jeter, and he's not thinking that way anymore. Mm -mm. Two on for the Yankees for Alex Rodriguez. Ball one inside. Alex Rodriguez, who grew up a diehard New York Mets fan, was wearing his Keith Hernandez jersey when the Mets won it in 1986. Two and oh. That was as an 11 year old growing up in the Miami area, jumping on his bed, hitting his head on the ceiling, wearing number 17. Keith Hernandez's number for so many years across town. 
This is the spot where A Rod is pressed this season. Only 213 average with runners in scoring position. And that has kept his RBI total down. He has driven in 46. Lighter in first inning trouble. A walk and a hit. Two and two. Two good breaking balls in a row thrown by Al Leiter. Jason Phillips. And Leiter is doing most of the talking. They had a tough time on the 2 0 pitch getting together. I'll guarantee you one thing that's the last thing in Bernie Williams' mind at second base, relaying a signal to Alex Rodriguez. A 2 2. Check swing ground ball. Lighter thought about trying to get the middleman. The runners advance to second and third, one out. Lighter looked back at second, but Jeter was too far along, and now it's second and third for Sheffield. And too far along because he had a good jump from first base. Normally, regardless of the speed of the runner at first, you'd have a play on him at second. It would have been close. Rodriguez did not get out of the box. But an excellent jump by Jeter is what opened up first base for the Yankees. Now it's Gary Sheffield who is back in the lineup. He has bursitis in his left shoulder. He took a cortisone shot this week. And after struggling in a series out in Los Angeles, it's taken him until Saturday to get back into the lineup. And the Yankees need him. The amazing thing about Sheffield is with all of the movement at the plate all the power numbers all the hits he is a very patient hitter. Two and oh. That's how he often gets hurt. There is so much torque in that swing when he goes after a pitch and then has to hold up. Yeah I think this is a good move. Trying to pitch around him and now just walking him intentionally. So much torque in his swing that when he he holds up, pulls in the wrist area, the hands, the back. Prevalent. Bases loaded for Giambi. Number 25. Pitch one is so important with Giambi at the plate. The count starts 0 and 1. He's a 171 hitter this season. If it starts 1 and 0, he's a 316 hitter. Ball one. Notice the Mets defense normally shaded around the pull for Giambi is playing Jason about straight up in hopes of getting the double play. And oh. You may have noticed that white by Al Leiter. A lot of times if a catcher and they're having a tough time getting together with the signs. Phillips going out to talk to Leiter. When a pitcher rubs his shirt like that you add one to whatever pitch it was. For instance if, if he called for a fastball and he wipes upstairs add one would be a curveball. That had a wrinkle on it. Two balls and a strike on Giambi. Bases loaded. Yankees trying to jump on top. Two and two. 
It's kind of been a revolving door behind the plate for the Mets anyway this season, whether it's been Phillips. Mike Piazza caught predominantly this past week when the Mets were in Cincinnati. They also have Vance Wilson, who's coming off the disabled list shortly on the 1st of July, and Tom Wilson, who they have recalled from AAA Norfolk. But it's Phillips now, and here comes a 2-2 pitch. Breaking ball from Al Leiter for his first strikeout. You rarely see Jason Giambi taking with two strikes. He'll strike out, but not too often does he take a call third strike. Key pitch for Leiter. So now the bases are loaded with two down for Jorge Posada. Breaking ball for strike one to Posada. Jorge Posada was not originally supposed to start as this matchup was postponed tonight. Rained out last night, so everybody just moved up a day. But Joe Torre wanted Posada in the game, two of the three against the Mets. So he's starting him against the left-hander Leiter. That gets Jorge's Pos Posada's attention one ball one strike. These two teams have a day night double header tomorrow. And Posada will have to catch one of those two games. Slow roller tough play for lighter throws to end the inning. So after all that falling behind one hitter after another Al Leiter leaves the bases loaded. Halsey back to work. Mets Yanks no score. Rick Peterson is the pitching coach for the New York Mets has done a fantastic job getting this Mets staff put together this season. And there is the meeting between Peterson Jason Phillips the catcher and Al Leiter the pitcher. Obviously problems between Leiter and Phillips in that first inning trying to straighten things out. Richard Hidalgo leads it off picked up on the 17th of June. And this season has been. A microcosm of how his career has gone. He started out great, but he fell apart so much so that the Houston Astros sent him to the Mets. First 22 games hit 360 and drove in 25 runs, only eight RBIs since. Three with the Mets, he homered this past weekend. Mike Cameron waits to hit next. First home run came on Sunday against Detroit and Hidalgo who four years ago hit 44 home runs in a season for Houston got a big contract and so far has been trying to live up to expectations and a bank account is struggling for it as he takes up and away three balls two strikes. Richard Hidalgo hit 44 home runs the year the Yankees beat the Mets in the World Series 2000 3 2 pitch a leadoff walk from Halsey 
In that game against the Dodgers last Saturday, Halsey walked only one in five and two thirds innings. Number 44. Here's Mike Cameron. Big error on Thursday for Cameron. With the sun out, bases loaded, Griffey up, Glavin pitching. He lost a ball in the sun. And the Mets ended up losing the series to the Reds. Ball one up and in. I hate to use that term or hear that term. Tough luck in baseball. Because normally you make your own luck. But if you're talking about tough luck, there is no pitcher in baseball who's had tougher luck than Tom Glavin this year. Halsey falls behind 2 0. Instead of talking about Roger Clemens to start the All Star game for the National League, game being played on July 13th in Houston, it could very easily be Tom Glavin who leads the majors in earned run average. 2.11. Opponents hitting only 200 against him. 3 0 now from Halsey. It's Cameron up now, Wigginton on deck, and then Zeal. A four pitch walk to put two on with nobody out. Jeannie Zelasco is standing by with a game break. Well, after the pounding, the Phillies took a fenway brought a. You think they want some payback? Todd Pratt taking advantage of Bronson Arroyo's shaky start, and then Johnny Damon's throwing error. Pratt would get a single. Chase Utley would come on down and score. It is 2 0 Philadelphia at that point. And that's where we sit, bottom two. Thank you, Jeannie. Tough luck error right there. <laughs> Ball hit the foot of Utley and went into the dugout. Tough luck. Here's Wigginton. Now that Reyes is back, and now that Hidalgo is a member of the Mets, it strengthened the bench. For Art House team. That's out of play. And it's also potentially put them in play if they want to make a deal and if they truly believe that they have a chance to win this season to add to their starting rotation. They do have scouts looking at Freddie Garcia and Chris Benson. And a guy like Wigginton, who has been terrific the last 30 games, hitting 316, has played some second base, played all last year at third. He's a guy that they've talked about. One ball, one strike. And the Mets could replace, as you see, Florida ahead by a game over the Phillies. The Mets three games back, but they could replace Wigginton with a young David Wright, who is now with Norfolk, AAA affiliate of the Mets, and he is supposed to be something. Only been there a couple of weeks, but he's hitting great. Halsey at least has it together enough not to bring it to the plate with his second baseman Cairo out of position. Two on with nobody out. The Mets threatening here in the second. Slow roller and Giambi will have only one play. One out. Second and third for Zeal. Number 27, Todd Zeal. First base, number 27. So Wigginton with what you like to call a productive out. Mm -hmm. Gives Zeal the RBI chance. Todd has driven in 21. He's had a couple of stretches where he's come up with dramatic base hits and home runs in this his final year. Playing again for the Mets. Baseball is one of the few games that you can hit a ball that weekly and get high fives for it in the dugout. In the process, moving the runners along. If it was the NBA, it's basically like shooting an air ball <laughs> and then coming over and getting high five. Yeah, that was uh, that was woo, that was great. Mm -hmm. A one zero zeal takes ball two and a throwdown gets away. Hidalgo will come in to score. 
Cameron will hold it third, and the Mets take the lead on a throwing error by Posada. Rodriguez shielded by the runner Hidalgo because Hidalgo went back almost standing up. Watch Posada on the fastball inside a design play but he throws it to the foul part. Hidalgo is standing up and the ball gets by Rodriguez. I don't think Alex ever saw the ball. Ball almost hit Hidalgo in the coconut. But you usually see that if a guy is wandering way off the bag there really wasn't anything there. That's true. Maybe Posada trying to force it a bit to help the rookie get out of trouble. And he compounded his problems with a run home and now Cameron at third with only one out. Of course last year we saw Ivan Rodriguez in the World Series pick off Nick Johnson of the Yankees at third base with two outs and he was about Three steps off. Of course, you're talking about Pudge Rodriguez and not normal mortals. Another walk, third of the inning. And it's first and third for Jason Phillips. Jason Phillips. Here comes Mel Stottlemyre to talk to Brad Halsey. The Yankees originally had hoped that Kevin Brown would be okay to make a start today. That was at the beginning of the week. Brown is supposed to work tomorrow. He felt good after a session yesterday and they hope that by the end of this upcoming week they have a decision as to whether he goes on a rehab assignment or if he's just activated. Right now he's already eligible to come off the DL. Phillips waits to hit and you can play hit the pros presented by the all new GMC Canyon and face real pitches from today's best hurlers. Log on to FoxSports.com. Keyword games, GMC. We are professional grade. Yankees won a double play ball. Phillips wants an RBI. And with Zeal dancing around at first, another ball out of the hand of Halsey. If there were scouts in the seats at Dodger Stadium to watch Halsey pitch last Saturday they had to have liked what they witnessed and you would have to believe that they are back watching Halsey work in case the Yankees try to package Halsey and maybe tomorrow their young catcher to try to get another established starting pitcher. center field Cameron will tag and score Williams makes the catch and it's two nothing Mets RBI number 21 for Jason Phillips and the Mets put up two here in the second without the benefit of a hit lighter pitching around two walks in the first inning a leadoff walk but not so Halsey here in the second inning. Here's Reyes. Three out of 22 this season. Ball one low to Jose. Not a very long rehab process at least with regard to game action for Reyes. It took a while just to get his body healthy. And the Mets were just dying to get him here and in their lineup. Just turned 21. And most people believe that at some point in the future, maybe next year, Reyes will go back to his natural position of shortstop and they'll move Matsui to second. There is a strike on a breaking ball, one and two on Reyes. I think the biggest mistake the Mets made was taking Reyes out of the shortstop hole and trying to make him a second baseman. You saw him play shortstop last year. You just simply do not make that move. 
Ground ball to third. Rodriguez backs up and gets the force out at second. But the Mets get a couple thanks to three walks and a throwing error. We go to the bottom of the second at Yankees Stadium. 2 nothing Mets. The Mets striking first with two in the second. Matsui, Sierra, and Cairo coming up. Bottom three in the lineup against Al Leiter, who got into and out of trouble. With only one exception, Leiter has been behind every hitter he's faced to this point. That's strike one. Matsui, 13 home runs, a 282 average. Matsui to Matsui. What happened last Saturday? Hideki Matsui, Hideo Nomo. Two Japanese major leaguers facing one another for the first time. And Matsui went deep for a three run first inning home run. With one out, here is Sierra, and there's strike one. Because of an economic slowdown that has been happening in Japan for over 10 years now, Japanese baseball is struggling. And there have been talks of a merger of two teams. And while a lot of those teams are being underwritten by major corporations just to keep them floating, a lot of the stars like the two Matsuis here, who are no relation and played in different leagues in Japan, are ending up playing here in the United States and Canada. After the 2001 season, there was talk of contraction here in the United States. In a form of contraction, a merger in Japan, the Quintetso Buffaloes and the Oryx Blue Wave. Oryx was the team for whom Ichiro played. They are in merger talks as we speak. With one out, nobody on. Here comes a two ball, two strike pitch to Ruben Sierra. And Leiter changed his mind. Now the 2 2. Ball three. Leiter is allowed two runs or fewer in nine of his 11 starts. He gets his second strikeout. Two out here in the second. Sometimes you hear that expression, he backdoored him. This is almost. Uh, where the veranda is in the south. A little side porch. I don't hear that term anymore, porch. No. I don't hear veranda much anymore. No. I, I would say I hear the word porch more than I hear the word veranda. With my own personal unscientific survey. With two out, nobody on. There's a strike. Gazebo. Lanai. <laughs> Lanai's. Big now. Yeah. Breezeway. That's on the infield, and that's a quick and easy inning. Wigginton uh, has it, and we go to the third. Al Leiter in the Mets. Up 2 nothing at Yankee Stadium. Matsui leads it off and takes a ball up and in. Matsui fly to right his first time up. This season has been a 290 hitter right handed, which tells you if you look at his overall average, what he's done left handed. Not much. 2 0. Oh. Where is Kaz from? Osaka. 13 time zones ahead. Rounds a one hopper to Alex Rodriguez. Matsui's 0 for 2. It's easy to forget, Tim. That about this time last year, everybody was wondering what the deal was with 
Hideki Matsui. That's true. He got off to a terrible start. It hit only a few home runs. There were grumblings from the front office and higher with the Yankees. Like, what did we pay for? You look at the first 70 games in the major leagues, it started to get better. And then at one point, Hideki Matsui took off after a series against the Mets. We had him in interleague play against the Cubs about this time last year. And he at one point was leading this Yankee team and not only average but RV RBIs. Mets fans can only hope that Kaz Matsui does something like that offensively. I think the bigger disappointment has been what he's done defensively mm -hmm. at the position of shortstop with the most errors in baseball 15. You can live uh, with the shortstop's offense if he produces defensively. And that was my point about Jose Reyes being as flashy as he was. And why would you even think of moving him anyway? Well, obviously, the Mets had to guarantee Matsui that he would play shortstop if the deal was made. We look at Jim Duquette, the general manager of the Yankees, or the Mets, pardon me. That ball four got away from Posada and hit the home plate umpire Gary Darling on the left hand. So another walk that's four from Halsey. This one getting away from Posada and Piazza draws the fourth walk of the ball game. Two of the other three came back to hurt Halsey. I think to further that point if you see if you had seen and if anybody was fortunate enough to see Jose Reyes play shortstop last year the one thing you say is this guy could be the Mets shortstop for the next 15 years and in my view under no circumstances you say you never say never in my view you never say never that this guy is going to move from that position and the Mets did and and they're paying for it and in fairness to the Mets I mean. Reyes hurting himself on March 15th making his debut about a week ago. But he is some kind of player at short. Nobody knows about second base. That pitch was up and Floyd tried to unload its own two. And as you said or hinted toward a moment ago that had to be part of the package to try to entice Kaz Matsui who had a lot of suitors in the major leagues here in the States to come to the Mets. There's a shortstop in Japan. You'll be a shortstop here with us. We'll move our other guy. But it seems like all signs point toward them switching back. Floyd is gone and Halsey made him look bad in the process. Third strikeout for Brad Halsey. Two of those have been Cliff Floyd. Good breaking ball out of the strike zone. There's not much more Tim that Halsey could have done than what he did last Saturday at Dodger Stadium. And if all the speculation is accurate and at some point the Yankees are going to end up making a deal and they need to throw a pitcher into the mix. The Yankees got exactly what they wanted out of Halsey last weekend at Dodger Stadium. You can't do much better and the stock can only start to edge backward a little bit if Halsey were to struggle here against the Mets or even pitch an OK ball game. Mm -hmm. Leave him wanting more. And I think he was tremendous against Los Angeles. He's been a little wild here in this start against the Mets with four walks and two and two thirds in it. Of course whether or not they trade Halsey is not going to depend on on one or two starts in the major leagues because those scouts have scouted him in the minor leagues. A guy who was tremendously successful in the minors 29 and 12 over two and a half seasons. But because of the type pitcher he is mm. he's not a blow you away right. type pitcher. You'd have to see this guy over a long haul to really appreciate. That's him. true. You're not going to see him one time and say wow we've got to get this guy although he could be a very good major league pitcher mm -hmm. at some point. But he does not have eye popping stuff. As he misses blown away two and two. Right now he looks more like Jamie Moyer than Freddie Garcia or Jamie Moyer than a guy like Jose Contreras. Contreras can blow you away with his stuff but not Halsey. One on two out two balls two strikes. 
Hidalgo took strike three over the outside corner. Four walks, four strikeouts. And a scoreless third inning for the rookie left-hander. Bottom of the third rolls in. Top of the lineup for the Yankees. They trail by two. Lighter left the bases loaded in the first inning. Bernie Williams drew a walk to start that inning. Then had a one, two, three second, and away we go with Williams up here in the third. Ball one. So Williams adds to that 473 on base percentage out of the leadoff spot for Joe Torrey. You said it last week. Torrey said his hands have come alive since getting into that spot in the order. A high strike. One ball, one strike. And just watching Bernie during batting practice today taking a lot of balls to right field and taking him to right field with pop. The one one or left field with some pop that's in the air at the track at the wall off the wall and Floyd missed it all together. And Williams has a lead off double. We've had several games that we have done over the past month or five weeks where outfielders, first basemen, catchers, had they gotten to the wall and then backed off, they would have been much better. It's very difficult to make a catch where you time getting there the same time the ball does. And that's what Cliff tried to do. It's not a routine play. But you're better off to get back to the wall and then back off. Cliff trying to time it right there. And that is a ball that could have been caught. Not should have, but could have. Al Leiter would agree with that. It's a double. And it's Jeter at the plate. Singled his first time. Ball one. For a guy who doesn't run well and Cliff Floyd is in that category this is a big left field to try and cover at Yankee Stadium. There's Excellent a lot point. of room up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The 1 0 almost hit Jeter on the left thigh 2 0. Left field here at Yankee Stadium as this ball almost hits Jeter. A biting fastball inside, but left field is so cavernous here. As Joe Torre once said that at Yankee Stadium, defensively, you almost need two center fielders, one in left, one in center. Yankees have not had the benefit of that until Matt Suey showed up last year. He is a solid defensive left fielder. Lloyd's looking up at the glare. Dealing with the sun, he's got his sunglasses on top of his hat. <laughs> so the Mets logo is well protected, but his eyes aren't. Cameron's got him on in center. Mets fans are saying, yeah, final. Grounded foul outside third. The count's two and one. Hidalgo's got his on top of his hat. Okay, right field is not a problem here at Yankee Stadium, but left field can be murderous. And as you said earlier Cameron has already had one ball that he lost in the sun this year unsure as to whether that ball in left field was because of the sun or because of Floyd getting there prematurely. The Mets play Jeter to hit it to the right side and he pops it up to the right side for Reyes with his glasses on top of his head one out. We keep talking about that play. Here it is with the bases loaded two out Griffey up Glavin made the pitch. And that cost the Mets the game in the series. And in that series the Mets bullpen was worked for 14 plus innings. So the rain out came at a good time for the bullpen for the Mets here last night runner at second one out. And here's Rodriguez. Alex grounded back to lighter. With two on and nobody out his first time up.
strike one on the outside corner. Today's Gillette Mach 3 power home run hitters. Tomey leads the world with 25. Adam Dunn, Pujols with 20. Manny Ramirez with 20. And then Rodriguez and Griffey Jr., who has 500 even in his career. Runner at second, one out, no balls, one strike. 2 nothing Mets here in the bottom of the third. What a night Manny Ramirez had in Boston last night. A curtain call for a defensive play. You see him often called out because of his home run prowess, but rarely for a defensive play. It wasn't the bullpen that called him out for the curtain call, was it? No. Here's an 0 1. One ball, one strike. To Al Leiter wiping with his glove once right on the new of New York. That means to add one for whatever sign that Jason Phillips called for. There it is. Two times. If he called for a fastball, this will be a changeup. That's into shallow center field. Cameron got a good break on it. Two out. So clearly sometimes that's got to be a deep. Sometimes. But if you add two. And that was a fastball. So he probably called for a curveball. And then you roll way over at three. It's not Come that on. difficult. You guys. He has three, he has three pitches. Yeah. One's a fastball. Two's a curve. Three is a changeup. If he calls for a curveball, he wipes twice. It's a fastball. What if he calls for a slider? Because you roll three. He doesn't have a slider. He has a curveball. What if he calls whatever three is? What's, he's got two pitches. That's it. He's got three pitches. Okay. One's a fastball. Two's a curve. Three's a changeup. Okay. So if he calls, he calls for calls for a curveball, he wipes twice. So you add two from two, two, three, one. Fastball. He got Rodriguez on a fastball. Why can't you just subtract one? Well, you can if you if you rub below the waist. That's exactly what you're so doing. So much easier. <laughs> Think. <laughs> Runner at second, two out. Oh, what a rip for a guy with a bad shoulder. Al Leiter is throwing awfully hard this afternoon. When you can crowd Gary Sheffield, get Alex Rodriguez out twice inside. Derek Jeter out once inside you're throwing hard. Well he and Phillips are on the same page the last two pitches that is launched in the air to left field back at the track at the wall game time. Jason Phillips. Fastball inside. That's what he wanted. That index finger. And that fastball stayed over the fat part of the plate, and Sheffield ties again. Leiter gives up his sixth home run of the season. 390th career for Sheffield. That reaction was classic because you saw the battery, both Phillips and Leiter. Disappointed. Giambi, a soft line drive to Kaz Matsui. The inning is over. A two out, two run shot. The birthday boy celebrates. We're 2 2 after three. First pitch is a strike to Mike Cameron from Halsey. Cameron, Wigginton, and Zeal. 6 7 8 for the Mets. 2 2 game. Off the hands. Jeter has to charge. Good play. One out. Our all star ballot update. First for the American League. It's presented by AmeriQuest. Ramirez, Guerrero, and Sheffield. Soriano. 
is the American League's leading vote getter. And in the National League presented by AmeriQuest. Bonds leads there and that's no huge surprise if that outfield holds. And you have Bonds Griffey and Sosa would be the first time in the history of the All Star game to have three guys in the same outfield with 500 or more home runs. Hmm. With one out Wigginton a base hit into left field. Barry Bonds Ken Griffey Jr. and Sammy Sosa. The leading vote getters for the National League outfield and you saw the name Vladimir Guerrero. A player that the Mets were interested in but could not get to sign on the dotted line and at least were a little skittish because of the back injury that hit Vladimir last year and is something that could at some point become chronic. Well of all the injuries that the Angels have had Vladimir Guerrero has been the one guy who's been able to answer the bell every day. Right. And his numbers compared to the Mets right fielders this season. He's literally doubled them all. All of them combined. He homered last night against Jose Lima in an Angel victory over the Dodgers. One on one out Zeal takes the ball. The numbers for Guerrero a 351 average 18 home runs 66 RBIs compared to the 32 that the Mets have received from all of their right fielders combined. A check on Wigginton who has a microscopic lead. Those three right fielders combined for the most part. The platoon of Kareem Garcia and Shane Spencer, and then the trade for Richard Hidalgo. Garcia's on the DL. Tendonitis in his left wrist. Runner is going. The pitch is a strike. The throw to second bounces in there, but Jeter was there to back up. Stolen base number three for Wigginton. The Mets do not steal often, but when they do, they're normally successful. They lead the majors in stolen base percentage, and you can understand why. Ty Wigginton with a tremendous jump off Halsey. He guessed right. Didn't have a big lead, ends up stealing his third, and it hasn't happened often against Posada, who's thrown out 33% this season. Second best in the big leagues with that percentage, but it was not even close. So now a hit by Zeal and or Phillips could put the Mets back out in front. A 1 1. 2 and 1. A Philly Boston update coming, and both teams are interested in what's going on at Fenway. There's a strike, two and two. In the dirt, blocked by Posada, three and two. Every time I see Todd Zeal in this ballpark, I think of Game one of the 2000 series when Timo Perez was on at first base and Todd Zeal hit the top of the left field wall. Perez was celebrating and was thrown out at home. Had he been running hard, he scores the first run. The Mets win the game, and who knows about that, that World Series? Won by the Yankees in five, but game one, who went to the Yankees in 12 innings, could have gone to the Mets. Is Caino won that game with a hit. 3 2 pitch is high, and it's two on with one out. Five walks by Halsey. Jeannie Zalasco is standing by with another. And more from Fenway, as promised. Now, Tim, you mentioned Manny Ramirez at the glove walking last night, and the bat was two, and apparently it's still hot. Off the monster, Manny doubles. Johnny Damon touches home, and it is Manny's 56th RBI of the season. 2 1 Phillies top four. C. Ortiz clapping a third man. He is in the middle of everything, everything for the Red Sox. Those two hitters, potent. Leads the American League in RBIs. 
Here's Phillips. Strike one. Jason a sack fly into center his first time up. Jason mad at himself because he missed a cookie. That last pitch right in his eyes a change up over the fat part of the plate. You don't get many cookies at the major league level. Chase that one it's 0 and 2. comes into this game with a career 500 average against Yankee pitching. 11 out of 22. Reyes is the man on deck. Halsey introduced to this rivalry for the first time. That's a fair ball down the left field line. Wigginton will score. Zeal will dig for third. It's an RBI double for Phillips and the Mets regain the lead. It's 3 2. After being away, away with everything, Brad Halsey tries to come inside to Phillips, but Jason just too quick inside and rifles one pass to diving Rodriguez. Joe Torre telling us last Saturday morning that this is the toughest play for a third baseman. Because the right handed hitter shields at third baseman because he's so closed, and that was a perfect shot of exactly what Torrey was talking about. Now back to the top of the lineup, Jose Reyes, who's 0 for 2. That being the difference between playing third and shortstop. With shortstop, you can you can see the ball coming toward you, but you are blinded a bit. When you make that move to third, ball one to Reyes. Four RBIs, he has a home run. Got a good rip, but it's one ball, one strike. Another cookie. Matsui next. Two balls and a strike. It's two and two. Jose Reyes thought this pitch was low and he had a point. Two two pitch. Reaching for it and a base hit into left. Nifty piece of hitting. It's another two run lead for the Mets. RBI number five for Jose Reyes. Reyes probably saying, well, if you're going to call it down there, I won't give you another chance to do that. Gary Darling, the home plate umpire, and this is a breaking ball. Raked to left field. Like he hit that ball with a hoe. And that'll bring Mel Stottlemyre out of the dugout to talk to Halsey. And it looks like it will also start action for the Yankees in their bullpen.
So first and third still only one out the Mets leading 4 2 in the fourth next Saturday games begin at 1 Eastern noon Central the Yankees will be at the Mets and the White Sox will be at the Cubs. Those two matchups this weekend taking place in the American League ballpark. And next week it's at Wrigley it's at Shea one Eastern 12 Central. The Cubs start the day. Three games out in the Central behind St. Louis and the White Sox are three out behind Minnesota in the AL Central. Let's go Mets cheer is being drowned out. I know the Yankees have been preoccupied with Carlos Beltran being dangled over the past couple of weeks. He finally was traded to the Houston Astros in a three team trade. And now the focus can go specifically on starting pitching, and the Yankees need to add to this rotation. A high strike to Matsui. They've got Brown on the disabled list. Messina's coming off a sore groin, pitched well. The 10 4 win at Baltimore this past week, five innings. But you're counting an awful lot on Lieber. Vasquez has been solid. Contreras will be one of the starters tomorrow for the Yankees in the day night doubleheader, and he's been inconsistent and frustrating so far. But his life has totally changed over this past week. Jose Contreras being reunited with his family, his wife and two daughters. Defecting on Monday. Matsui chased it 0 2. Uh, clearly pressing. Matsui being booed at Jay Stadium. A lot of Mets fans here and going after a ball about nine inches outside. What a great story that Contreras story is. Are you right, Joe? Wife Miriam and the two children defecting over the past week and Contreras meeting them in Miami. Finally getting to New York with his family toward the end of the week. Was scheduled to pitch here today, but with the rain out, push to tomorrow. Now they have Reyes leaving too soon. Giambi looked at the runner at third, and Reyes takes second. It's a stolen base for Reyes. No idea why he didn't throw the ball. I mean, you have no foot speed. One of the slower runners around at third base. And Giambi fakes to second. There's no way Jason Phillips is going anywhere. So why fake? The 0 2. Base hit into right field. And the score is Phillips. Here comes Reyes. Two more runs. And it's 6 2 Mets. Played by Jason Giambi forced Joe Torre to bring the Yankee infield in. Had it been back, perhaps Cairo makes that play. I'm not saying they'll get two, but perhaps he makes the play. But with the infield in, the ball slicing away from Cairo, and the Mets add two more. It also forces Halsey out of the game. The rookie is gone. The Yankees have to go to the pen in the fourth. Kaz Matsui with a key hit that drove Brad Halsey out of the game. And Halsey will be relieved by Tanyan Sturts, who's done a very good job of the Mets. Only had one start, but he's 2 and 2 and 0, oh, his eighth appearance of the year. Runner on at first is Matsui. Seventh man to bat in the inning is Piazza. And a check on Kaz Matsui, who's done some more running lately. He has stolen 10. Strike over the outside. 
inside corner. Pretty good velocity from Sturtz. Cliff Floyd on deck. The Mets with a four run fourth in support of Al Leiter, and that's not always been the case. He has very little run support on his record this season. Leiter with only 2.29 runs per game. The reason why, despite the ERA of 2.14, he's won only twice in 11 starts. Check on Matsui. The Yankees are also looking for a fit in their bullpen for a left handed reliever. Heredia has not been very good this season and they traded away Gabe White. Good pitch to tie up Piazza strike two. The most power hitters like to extend those arms. And that's why pitchers who throw as hard as Sturtz can come inside to the powerful Piazza. Matsui's running. A chance for Posada. Safe. Cairo couldn't get the glove on Matsui in a stolen base, the second of the inning. Make it third. So the Mets have come in here and decided they want to test Posada. And Sturts giving him little chance. Watch Matsui kind of wriggle around Miguel Cairo, who missed the tag because the throw was on the first base side. Now the 2 2 to Piazza is in the dirt. One of the reasons the Yankees in their bullpen have been as as effective as they have been even against left handed hitters is because of the work that Quantrill gives them good against lefties the same for Gordon and obviously Rivera who's having one of his best first halves ever. Three two pitch is fisted in the air to left field that's going to bring home another. It's seven to two Mets here in the fourth inning on an RBI by Piazza. Piazza is so strong fighting the ball off inside and you just wonder Joe that what kind of numbers Mike Piazza would put up if he were a designated hitter in the American League he's two for two today been on base all three times a double a single what a hitter and a strike over the inside corner this year having to deal with trying to learn a new position at the big league level and for the most part learn it in season. Mm -hmm. First base this last week I'm sure was bittersweet for him returning behind the plate and catching all week. Now the D.H. 0 and 2 on Floyd. If I may relate to that I would imagine it was more bitter than sweet. <laughs> The emotional part of it, though. No, absolutely, yeah. The physical part, that's the bitter part. Mm. Look at what Philadelphia is doing to Boston. 7 to 1 in the top of the fifth. Floyd takes ball one. The numbers for Halsey three and a third inning, six runs earned, seven runs total, five hits, five walks, four strikeouts. The walks hurt him in that two run second, and again here in the fourth. Floyd grounds it to first down to second Piazza two out. And the ninth man to bat in the inning Richard Hidalgo will step to the plate. Three fielder. Trying to be fair here but I mean you know when you think about Jason Giambi holding that ball if he gets the out at second base that keeps the infield back and the ball hit by Matsui could have been fielded by Miguel Cairo because he's not going to play uh, in double play depth and cheating towards second base. That's a key play in this inning and could have been the reason for the three runs extra scored by the Mets here. Hidalgo with a two out RBI chance takes a strike. That 
gets into center field for another run. Piazza will score easily. It's 8 2 Mets in the fourth as Hidalgo delivers a two out RBI hit. Five for five with runners in scoring position for the Mets this inning. Center fielder Mike Cameron. One of the more epic games as far as interleague play is concerned. When the Mets played the Yankees back in 1997, they won that first game with Dave Malicki pitching a shutout. They are routing the Yankees so far this afternoon. Eight to two in the fourth inning. Cameron late it's 0 and 2. Here's that play once again first and third and only one out had Giambi completed the play and right there I mean you know Reyes is a fast runner but if you throw the ball to second base you get the out then the infield can drop back and perhaps the innings over on Matsui's ground ball to right field instead of scoring two. And the innings over. Instead, four more runs across the plate. Jose Reyes with a big hit. Here's a one two. Cameron just got a piece. Cameron started this inning by grounding out, then a hit by Wigginton. A walk, an RBI double by Phillips. Reyes got the RBI hit. Showed you the stolen base. Then Matsui drove home two. Pitching change, an RBI hit by Piazza. And an out later, an RBI hit by Hidalgo. Two and two Cameron takes ball three. It's the consummate teammate who says to his team that hey guys today I want to go 0 for two in the same inning. <laughs> Cameron has that opportunity. But it's been a big inning for the Mets. That's out of play. So Tanyan Sturtz has not quieted the Mets since entering with Piazza coming up. Trying to get Cameron to end this long top of the fourth. And another foul. The Mets trail the Marlins by three. The Marlins lost to Tampa Bay last night two to nothing. Duan Brazelton came within four outs of a no hitter. Tampa Bay on fire. One 12 straight lost and now they're back on the beam again as that's popped up left side. And out of play. Fourteen of fifteen for Lou Pinella's team. And the latest during the season in team history which have been five hundred. Jason Schmidt 10 straight victories and still nobody's talking about him or really the Giants who are red hot now have opened up a little lead in the West. That's popped up over near the Yankee dugout. Posada has a play and the inning is over but not before big damage is done by Mets bats. We look back from Phillips to Reyes to Matsui Piazza. And a tough day for Brad Halsey, the rookie left-hander. 8-2 Mets. Al Leiter doesn't know what to do with all this support. Eight runs, the most he's had all year. He and the Mets lead 8-2. Bottom of the fourth inning and a ball to Posada. 
Posada, Matsui, and Ruben Sierra. A little high, it's 2 0. The 2 0 pitch. 2 and 1 from Al Leiter. Posada tapped out with the bases loaded his first time. There's another strike, two and two. Three and two. Depending on what the Mets do as this season wears on. I can think of three guys that if they were available and if they would agree to a deal would be awfully attractive to the Yankees. Popped up into shallow center field. And Cameron is there for out number one. All right. The guy on the mound today. Yep. Who doesn't want to leave New York but he may leave New York for New York. It's an interesting point and a good one. Tom Glavin. Hmm. Obviously the Yankees would be interested. Mike Stanton. Even John Franco. Mm -hmm. This Perhaps. is called food for thought yes. in the 8 yes. 2 fourth inning Marshall. game. We've gone from cookies as pitches to food Just for thought. Little food and little tidbits, little yes. things to think about. Mm -hmm. As you watch Lighter miss high with ball one. Now, if the Mets, let's say, have a nice little hot streak over the next three weeks. They have said that if they find the right piece they will add not subtract. And we already heard from Cliff Floyd that the division's wide open in the mm -hmm. NL East. A one one two and one. You would be a moron to bet against the Atlanta Braves looking at what they've done the last 12 years winning the division under Bobby Cox. However, Moron Joe <laughs> looks at them as five and a half out. Mojo. Trailing three teams, and they've even talked about subtracting. A guy like Mike Hampton may be on the block. That's up. Three balls, two strikes. I think the division races and all of the potential transactions that could happen the rest of the way mm -hmm. would be really interesting. And again as we said in the opening the Mets really don't know what they have yet. They don't know whether they really have a contender. They win today they will be right at 500 after 70 games. A 3 2 to Matsui is ripped in the air to right at the wall home run it's 8 3. Second Yankee home run of the day. Conveying more than a tad of nationalism, hitting it over the recently painted Yamiuri sign. They own the Yamiuri Giants. That orange sign right in straightaway right field. The Giants are considered the Yankees of Japan. Mm -hmm. 0 and 2 now on Sierra. And their ratings have suffered since the exit of Hideki Matsui. Still doing very well in the television end of the business. Which is our concern here at Fox. <laughs> right, let's be honest. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Time call to the plate. Matsui's figured out that right field wall though. He just kind of leans back and he tomahawked that ball over the wall and right. Mm -hmm. 
That short porch here at Yankee Stadium. One two pitch. Two and two. Only the seventh home run of the year for a deck. He had 16 last year after hitting 50 his last year before leaving Tokyo. Two and two to third and Wigginton got the high hop before it took a little short hop two out. Let's go to Los Angeles Jeannie with a game break and Joe I ask you what does Jim Tomei have to do to get more all star votes. How about this a two run home run at Fenway 26th of the season that leads the majors he has 13 in the last 18 games and a seven one Philly top six. The answer simple Jim has just got to stop being such a bad guy. <laughs> That's right. I mean he needs to be more friendly. Mm -hmm. That's how you get votes. I mean clearly Barry Bonds is a leading vote getter in the National League so. I'm saying this uh, to follow up. The most and meant in the most respectful of ways but he is the Andy Griffith of Mayberry of the major leagues. He is the nicest man. Just can't believe it. I mean, so unaffected. I understand he is fourth in the voting, mm -hmm. and yet he leads the major leagues in home runs. Yeah. Two balls and a strike. Yeah, you won't run across many nicer guys than Tommy. Another guy who's having a great year at first base in the National League is another guy in that category, and that's Sean Casey of the Reds. That's popped up foul off the bat of Cairo. Two and two. It goes Pujols, Bagwell, Casey, and then Tony. Sean Casey hitting 357 to lead the National League. Matsui is homered here in the inning. It's an 8 3 game, and Lighter brings home a 2 2 to Cairo. Should end the inning. Shallow left center, Matsui. Inning over. A home run by Hideki Matsui. It's an 8 3 score. Back after this from your local Fox station. We slide into the fifth inning. It's 8 3. The Mets on top and first pitch swinging was Wigginton. Strike one. Zeal and Phillips will follow. The Mets have lost their last seven games to the Yankees. Today, the first game of this three game set, with three more to come next weekend, they lead 8 3 after four. Two balls and a strike. I think what would be a, a real eye opener to the Mets season would be to sweep the Yankees. Unheard of? Well, not necessarily. A Difficult matchup. to do, obviously. And a matchup of Traxel and Contreras. And you yeah. don't know how Contreras is going to pitch tomorrow after mm -hmm. the kind of week he's been through and really the season that he's been through. Traxel has been very good. And then Messina and Ginter will pitch on Sunday night. Pretty good pitch from Sturtz. Doesn't get the call. It's a full count. There's Jose Contreras. Another foul. The story of Jose Contreras really brings to mind and brings to light the bigger picture, and that has to do with the thousands upon thousands of families that have been split over the years as Wigginton just got out of the way of that pitch the ball hit his bat it's a foul tip three balls two strikes Fidel Castro's reign has been almost 50 years now and over the years people have been split from their families with very little word of how things are going back home and maybe getting a letter mom passed away two weeks ago. Never getting a chance to see the family again or visit a gravesite. As Wigginton strikes out. We talked with Roberto Gonzalez Echeverria, who's become a good friend of ours 
here in the booth coming to us and joining us in the booth weekend after weekend up here in New York Yale University and the chairman of the Hispanic department the Spanish and Portuguese department at Yale and it was really his point and it's well taken somebody who's an expert on Cuban baseball and baseball in the Caribbean talking about that very aspect and so while it's a tremendous story for Jose Contreras and everything that's gone on in his life and for his wife and for his two daughters you think about so many families that don't get that opportunity. The 0 2 zeal stays up there and the count stays no balls two strikes. Total of 21 people on that boat making it to U.S. shores. And generally, when that happens, they're allowed to stay. One ball, two strikes. Check swing, Zeal didn't go, two and two. Everybody with the Yankees figures and hopes that it will be a more relaxed Jose Contreras and maybe more effective Jose Contreras after being reunited with his family. There's a base hit in the left. Zeal is on, one on, one out. We the talked with Art Howe moments ago before the start of this fifth inning. Art Howe, the manager of the Mets, uh, first of all, a great start to today's game, and you have to be excited about finally getting a, a good look at your team the way it was supposed to be coming into this season with Reyes and uh, and some of the names back in your lineup. Yeah, we're healthier now than we've been for quite some time. We still have a couple guys, Garcia and Wilson, that are still out, but uh, we're feeling pretty good about the lineup we're able to put out there on a daily basis now. Art, you saw uh, Richard Hidalgo as a 15-year-old when you were managing uh, with the Houston Astros, and you said he was just an electrifying talent. Yes, he was. Uh, everybody in the Astro organization was very, very high on him, and they couldn't wait for him to grow up a little bit. <laughs> he has. Hey, everybody talks about, from the players' perspective, this is a big hassle, this series, but you feel the electricity in this ballpark. I know it's fun for us. Do you? Can you have any fun during this series? <laughs> yeah, when you win, it's a lot of fun, I guess. But uh, last year, we had our problems, so hopefully uh, we can get some W's this year in it. And, yeah, it's great for the fans. Uh, the fans of the city, they're all pumped up for it. Art, uh, good start to this one, and thanks for the visit. Thanks, guys. That's Art Howe, manager of the Here's a double play ball off the bat of Phillips and right on cue. The top of the fifth is history. 6-4-3 to end the frame. Bottom of the fifth rolls in. Top of the order for the Yankees. They have to get to work. They trail by five. Go into the bottom of the fifth inning. Top of the order for the Yankees. And they find themselves down 8-3 to Al Leiter in the New York Mets. John Franco is wearing an earpiece and a microphone on his uniform top and has been kind enough to join us during this frame and we will talk to John after this first pitch to Bernie Williams. Ball one. Hey John thanks for doing this. Sure no problem. Um, are you as surprised as some across baseball that you guys are uh, staying afloat here in the division and start the day only three games out. I'm not very surprised. I mean we've always had the talent here. It's just a matter of going out there you know keeping some healthy bodies out there. And I, I, basically our pitching has been carrying us uh, all the way up until now. So hopefully our hitter will come up and uh, take a little bit of pressure off the pitching staff. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. I mean, as surprising as the Mets can be as a team, it's you could talk to diehard baseball fans and say, who leads the major leagues in Team ERA? I don't know that the Mets would jump out of anybody's mouth. No, I don't think so. I think we surprised a lot of people. And that's a tribute to Rick Peterson. He's can't come in here and he's done a tremendous job with everybody here. Uh, especially the starters, you know, Tom and Al and Steve Traxel and Gittner. Uh, those guys have been pitching great. And then in the bullpen, you know, Looper and uh, Ricky Vitalico have been pitching steady and, uh, and Stanton also. So those guys have been doing a great job. John, in, in what way is Rick different from other pitching coaches that you've worked with? I just think uh, Timmy just keeps it simple. Uh, he has some great, great ideas. Uh, he's very, he, he's, uh, he looks at film un unbelievable. I mean, if, like this Yankee series, he, he'll ride the bike for 40 minutes 
and watch every at bat for every hitter on that team. And then, then when we have the meetings, he'll break down everything about swings, certain swings. Uh, with with uh, certain pitches, uh, you know, he won't change their mechanics too much. He'll just try to suggest something and try it a certain way. So everybody kind of adapted to his ideas, and it's kind of worked. I can't imagine John Franco getting into Zen philosophy and all that other stuff. I mean, you're kind of leaving that stuff off to the side, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll, know. we'll see. Come on. <laughs> of all the bullpens that you've inhabited during your long, and I mean long, major league career, how does that Yankee Stadium bullpen rank? Oh, they're very good. I mean, you know, whenever you have Mariano closing. No, you know, no, no. I don't uh, mean them. Here. I mean, oh, how mean physically here. is it out there with fans well, and all that? Well, you know, tonight's, today's not too bad. I think it's more family-oriented today out here. I think last night, if we would have played, we would have heard a lot. And I think tomorrow night, we're going to hear quite a bit, too. So, uh, over the years coming here, we had our share of uh, uh, number one signs thrown at us. But uh, we've been fine. Derek Jeter plugs the gap in right center field. He has a one-out double. You know it's Jeter's birthday, John. Are you excited about that? Happy birthday. Isn't that great? <laughs> so you got a hit for his birthday. I hope that's where it ends. Right that's now. it. That's <laughs> it. It's his 30th. What were you doing when you were 30? Uh, let's see. It's my first year with the Mets, 1990. So, uh, and my, my buddies are throwing sunflower seeds at me. They're just jealous that they're not on TV with That's right. Guys. Well, you're the only guy we wanted to talk to down there. Yeah. I certainly don't want to talk to Vitalico. Yeah, Vitalico and Stanton, they're just jealous right now. Yeah. Well, that's all right. <laughs> I, I made mention of it earlier, and, and I'll just ask you since we've got you on, and I know you won't answer it, so this is basically a waste of time. Okay. I'm going to ask it Take anyway. Is, is Alex Rodriguez is at the plate. There are a lot of guys in your team that if you guys fall out of it uh, would be, I think, pieces that would fit in nicely, even here with the Yankees. If that was ever presented to you, would you ever even consider that? Uh, I leave all my options open. <laughs> okay. There you go. All right. Thanks. Fair answer. Fair answer. Lafayette High School, uh -huh. Brooklyn, New York. I mean, you're not going to move out of this city, are you? Oh, no, no. I'm, uh, I'm here to stay. And, uh, in fact, my, my, my boy right now is involved in a Little League All-Star tournament, so I get a chance to watch him uh, occasionally so uh, and my daughter plays a bunch of tennis so I'm, I'm home quite a bit and I'm enjoying the heck out of it I mean uh, I've been here for 15 years and it's been great. Oh and one the count that's outside a ball and a strike to Alex Rodriguez I, I know you're uh, we're looking right now and I know you can't see it at a picture of you at St. John's. Yeah, a little what do you guy. think you look like? I'm sorry. I said, what do you think you look like? You look like you're 11. Yeah, St. John's. Yeah, there's a little skinny thing there. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know about weight training when I got to St. John's. That's ripped foul down the left field line and a great catch by the little ball guy down the left side. I was um, just getting on him to, uh, yesterday about not making a play down the line. He made a great play. This really? <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, that rain out last night couldn't have hurt your bullpen after all the work you guys got to get Cincinnati. I'm, I'm sure a, a night off was welcome. Yeah, uh, we've, uh, you know, that extra inning game yeah, on uh, Wednesday night and then uh, yesterday, uh, I'm sorry, on Thursday, uh, really uh, all the guys kind of could have used a day off. Uh, you know, myself, Stanton, uh, Ricky, I mean, everybody could use later. I mean, then we, we just got Ober Marino back, so that's a fresh arm out here also. So uh, we're well rested today. One ball, two strikes. I only have one question left. Runner at second, one out. Al Leiter trying to get through this fifth inning. He's got a five-run lead. Two and two. As a New York guy, despite all the hassles, you've got to enjoy this crosstown rivalry and playing interleague play against the Yankees, don't you? Uh, it's, it's great. I mean, as a New York, growing up in New York, as a, a Mets fan I grew up as, and this is going back to when I was a kid, we used to have the thing called the Mayor's Trophy game where the Mets and Yankees used to play once a year, and it was just great. So now it's, you know, six times a year, and then both fans and both uh, stadiums get full for six games, and uh, the city kind of just shuts down and see what's going on. I think it's great for both teams, and it's great for baseball, too. Well, John, thanks for your time, and good luck to you guys the rest of the way. It's been a fun start for you all, and uh, and I'm going to be interested to see how you guys end up. Good luck. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, right. John. Bye-bye. It's John Franco, and our thanks to John. We, as a network, whether it's us or ESPN or the local Fox affiliates or independent channels, we only ask. We don't tell. We ask if they'll wear a microphone and talk to us, and we appreciate John joining us and Art Howe and the work done by Jay Horowitz, the PR director of the New York Mets.
We hope you enjoy it as well. Runner at third, two out here. A one out double by Jeter. He's at third for Gary Sheffield, who pounded a two run home run back in the third. Ball one. One thing you've got to love about Rick Peterson, uh, he travels his own route at through life. He had a meeting of the Mets pitchers in Arizona recently where he handed out fortune cookies to all the pitchers. You talked about that Zen philosophy. You talk about breaking things up. Each pitcher read their own fortune. Some shared it with others. Some didn't. And were they were they tricked up fortune cookies. No no to my knowledge they were just fortune cookies. Eleven to the eleven pitchers on the Mets staff. And they had fun with it. But he is unusual now I'll tell you that. Good pitch on the inside corner to Sheffield two and one. And rarely does Rick Peterson talk about the mechanics of pitching but more as Don Imus would say the check up from the neck up. If you got a fortune and it said a visit to Dr. Job is in your future. <laughs> that'd be a bad you picked the wrong cookie. It That's would be better to say a visit to Dr. Phil is in your future. <laughs> Three balls or Dr. Strike. Ruth. <laughs> Any other doctor other than Joe. Dr. Ruth. Runner at third, two out, three balls and a strike on Sheffield. He went. Home plate umpire didn't have to appeal. Gary Darling said strike two. And Gary thinking this was a that breaking ball would stay up, but he clearly went. Eight to three. The Mets on top, runner at third, two out, and now a three two to Sheffield. Ooh. I don't know who's grunting and groaning, if it's lighter or Sheffield. I think it's lighter. And he would have been groaning had Sheffield connected with that pitch. Let's take a listen. That's lighter. You know that grunt anywhere, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. First and third, two out. Our jury virtual verdict question Who would you rather be for a day? Jeter? Rodriguez or Piazza. It's our little fantasy question. You can vote now at FoxSports.com. Keyword the jury. We will not be accepting right in. It's got to be one of those three. First and third, two out. Biders just trying to get through five. Giambi standing in his way. Ball one with one swing of the bat. Giambi can make this a game. Jason 0 for 2. A Rod 0 for 3. In the air to right field, got it off the end of the bat. And Hidalgo puts it away to end the inning. Two left by the Yankees. We go two to six. Top of the order coming up for the Mets. Metsies, Metsies, Metsies. They lead it 8-3. A five-run Mets lead as they bat in the sixth inning. Top of the order. Reyes goes after the first pitch and he pops it up. Rounds first and we'll head back to the dugout. We look at the running style of Jose Reyes. So much has been made of him changing the way he runs. This is last year. Legging out a triple. And this year, whether it's the hamstring, the back, or just making a concerted effort to run differently, he doesn't seem to be getting around the bases. 
nearly as well. No. They're, they're just looking at that. Clearly, there is a favoring of the of the left side of Jose Reyes. What people are most taken by when they meet Reyes is how big he is. He's six feet tall. That pitch is up two and one. He just turned 21, so you have to believe he'll fill out, get stronger, get stronger. But I, I would think uh, with that tight body, Matsui to Matsui, two out. The Mets would hope that he would only get stronger and not fill out as far mm -hmm. as bulk is concerned. With that, that, he's got the ideal baseball body, that life strength. There aren't many left. No. <laughs> Mike Piazza with two out, and nobody on. <laughs> Strike one. Well, the base is empty two out Piazza takes ball one if you're the Yankees in particular Tanyan Sturts this is one of those pat on the back go get him big guy. He's going to have to get some outs and eat up some innings with a day night doubleheader coming up tomorrow. Rick Peterson is talking shop with lighter there's a pop up. A one two three inning for Sturtz as Posada puts it away. Bottom of the sixth. Yankees bat trailing by five. Al Leiter stranded two in the fifth. He will work to the bottom part of the order for the Yankees here in the sixth. It's eight three Mets. Leiter is a 21 year old was pitching for the New York Yankees that was back in 87 traded to Toronto for Jesse Barfield in April of 89 there's 0 1 pitch to Posada almost turned right into it one ball one strike the Mets got him from the Marlins for A.J. Burnett in February of 98. I did through a no hitter for Florida. Their first in franchise history against Colorado in May of 96. And Burnett is just starting to come into his own and coming back from arm trouble for the Marlins. AJ was the loser in last night's game against the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Devil Rays now have won 13 of their last 14. But Burnett appears to be back. Maybe not as far as stamina is concerned. But as far as stuff is concerned. Two and two now on Posada. Keeping it inside and Posada ripping it foul. Jorge today is 0 for 3. Yankees had a chance to jump out big in the first inning. Put their first two on that had bases loaded only one out but Giambi struck out looking on a 3 2 pitch and Posada tap back to lighter. That's a foul ball. Fans you can be part of Major League Baseball history and help select the starting lineups for the 2004 All Star game. This one counts and so does your vote. Log on to MLB.com to cast your AmeriQuest All-Star ballot today. Leiter works home a 2-2 pitch. Talk of the possibility of Roger Clemens pitching to Mike Piazza, the starting battery after all the problems they had back in 2000. Roger Clemens hitting Mike Piazza in the head. 
on July 8th, 2000, in the bat incident in the World Series, Game Two. Roger Clemens started the last All-Star game in Houston back in 1986. His mound opponent, Dwight Gooden. That's foul. We talked to Mike Piazza about that possibility, and as Posada goes to get a new bat let's hear about Mike and the potential to catch Roger Clemens in the upcoming All-Star game. There's not really a situation. I mean I've always prided myself in being the utmost professional. Um, you know I think it's his moment. I think he deserves um, you know all the accolades and, and attention he's going to get it. and I you know if I'm part of that which it seems like it's going to be then I'm looking forward to it and I'm going to do the best I can you know to not only um, help our team win but you know him and all of our pitchers to, to do well so I, I never think that that's an issue. Handled very well by Mike Piazza and I know to the two of us that doesn't surprise us at all. Very classy guy and after getting the record this season for home runs hit by a catcher he is trying to make the transition to first base and there have been times where it hasn't gone very well. Struggling with the footwork. Struggling just to feel comfortable over there as Matsui flies to left. Floyd with the glasses on. They're not on his hat, they're on his face. Two out. Posada struck out. Matsui flies out. And our Budweiser Fantasy Player of the Week is Edgardo Alfonso. That's his week. Log on to FoxSports.com. Keyword Fantasy Baseball. Today's game brought to you by Budweiser. Grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It's game time. Alfonso was quoted as saying, maybe the week I've had will make people think twice about walking Barry Bonds. And to that I say, no. No, it won't. Pitch is high for a ball to Ruben Sierra. But it's a nice thought. Yeah, it uh, is. I mean, what the heck? For a Renaissance guy, a guy who's really recharging his career with the Giants. A 1-0 pitch. One ball, one strike. Giants now three games ahead of San Diego. I mean, what happened? It's it's that coming over the last month. The Dodgers at one time were 22 and 10. And since that time, they've been playing nine games under 500. We were there last Saturday. They were in first place. Mm -hmm. But a four-game sweep by the San Francisco Giants will do that to you. And then they lost last night, the Dodgers did, to Anaheim. 13 to nothing. Here's a one-two pitch. Sierra takes strike three, and the inning is over. Four strikeouts for Liner, six innings under his belt. You're going to mop this floor until it shines like the top of the Chrysler building. It's 8 3 back after this from your local Fox station. To one to deep center, gone. Home run, Floyd. That makes it 9 3 Mets in the seventh. Eighth of the year for Cliff Floyd. Earlier in the game we talked about Mike Piazza and how you have to crowd the strong guys. Well this swing by Cliff Floyd gives you an idea of what happens when strong guys get extension. Check this out. Fastball away. Full extension. Gone. Now Hidalgo takes a ball outside. Richard an RBI single a walk a run scored. How about the Astros and the way they've changed over the past two weeks. One more time you can see that full extension right there on contact. Back to Sturtz. Tanyan flips. One out. The Houston Astros trade Richard Hidalgo. They open up a spot for Jason Lane a young outfielder they like. Now they pull off their part in a three way trade. They land Carlos Beltran. They've got Beltran in center. 
They've moved, they've moved Biggio again. He's now in left. Berkman's in right. He's never played that position. And they've traded away the former Met, Octavio Dotel, who was the closer after losing Billy Wagner over the offseason. Hmm. Trading him to Philadelphia. I'm not so sure that the Astros are a better club with Beltron and without Dotel. They're going to ask an awful lot out of Brad Lidge, who takes over as the closer, as Cameron's hit by a pitch. And they're going to need some other guys to step up and get some key outs if they don't add a late inning relief specialist the rest of the way. If they do, then they're a much better ball club. Much better ball club, and you wonder at what price they're going to be a much better ball club. Fastball tailing in on the left hip of Mike Cameron. Plus right. Beltran's supposed to be just a rental. Yeah, right. He's a free agent at the end of the season. Scott Morris, we saw him last weekend. He's his agent. And there is obviously a lot of interest up here for a guy like Beltran over the upcoming offseason. Ball one to Wigginton, who's one for three with a single and a run scored. He's one guy that I don't think will ever be with the New York Yankees. I mean, not ever, but not in the, in the next four or five years. Beltran. The 1 0. Popped up. Cairo dances underneath it. Two out. Tomorrow, NASCAR returns to Fox live from Sonoma, California, with Nextel Cup Racing presented by Subway. Defending champion Robbie Gordon and the Rainbow Warrior Jeff Gordon clash on the West Coast in NASCAR's first road race of the year. Coverage begins tomorrow at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, only on Fox. NASCAR in one of the two of the Valleys of the Vino right outside San Francisco. Go back to that. You think Beltran will not be in New York? I game. do not. No, I don't think because then what are you going to do with Matt Suey, Bernie Williams or Gary Sheffield? Unless you decide to make Bernie Williams a full fledged designated hitter and I don't think he's ready for that. I just don't think uh, the Yankees will have an end. I think the Yankees along with Joe Torre who is so concerned about starting pitching all the time is more inclined to go after starting pitcher pitchers as opposed to a guy like Beltran. Joe Torre has four rings and he'll tell you he won championships with pitching. Hmm. And in particular the guy at the end of the bullpen Mariano Rivera but solid starting pitching. Something the Yankees covet right now. Yeah I mean that could change if a team like Boston was interested in Beltran because the Yankees are more inclined to make deals to keep players away from other teams as much as they are to acquire a player. Brian Cashman has uh, has said as much. That's an expensive game of keep away. <laughs> oh, it is. Bernie Williams is on that list. Yeah, right. He almost became center fielder for the Red Sox mm -hmm. a few years ago. Three balls and a strike on Zeal. Base hit. Todd Zeal has been on base four times today. Two walks, two singles. And Jason Phillips, the number nine hitter, will be at the plate. Todd Zeal, who has said this will be his final year in the big leagues, a career that started back in 1989, being called up by St. Louis. And the question is not what will he do when he hangs it up, it's what won't he do. He's got his hand in everything including a movie production company had a little bit part in a movie that they're putting together it's an American Pie esque kind of movie and he played a bum named Mullet the movie Dirty Deeds a little tap back to the mound can we get that headshot up of zeal as we go to break can I do that can I produce a direct from up in the booth no Guess not. Home run by Floyd. It's 9 3, but don't worry. That picture's coming. 
pleasant day weather wise at Yankee Stadium it has not been pleasant head to head for the New York Mets losers of seven straight to the Yankees during interleague play you see the difference in runs per game the starter ERA but it's reversed this afternoon Al Leiter outpitched Brad Halsey and our Nissan game summary here's what's happened today Leiter six innings he will work at least start the seventh Halsey couldn't get through four the Mets fourth ten batters six runs five out of eight with runners in scoring position are the Mets they made it nine three thanks to this from Cliff Floyd into center. Two home runs hit by the Yankees today one by Matsui a two run shot by Sheffield and that's it against Leiter who is up over 100 pitches for the day. There is action and help getting ready in the bullpen for the Mets if they need it. Leiter will work to Cairo Bernie Williams and Derek Jeter. Ricky Vitalico is getting loose. Cairo today is 0 for 2. If you're a stat guy in these days most managers are. Miguel Cairo is in a good position with the Yankees as he started the season splitting time with Enrique Wilson. But the statistics say that when Cairo's in the starting lineup the Yankees have a winning percentage of 727 24 and 9. Since May 15th, Cairo sitting 3-11, so he's been a part of that. And he takes a strike over the outside corner from Leiter. A long day of work for Al Leiter. It has not been easy during different stretches. But he's persevered, and his teammates have given him nine runs. 0-2 oh, on Cairo. Miguel Cairo is the type of player that opens eyes like Placido Polanco or the Philadelphia Phillies does. Very good bench player for the last two years for St. Louis and Tony La Russa. And now he is predominantly the second baseman for the Yankees. In 2004, Cairo's gone. Strikeout number five for Leiter. Going after a bad ball after we just praised him. Bernie Williams now is one for two with a double run scored. He's flat out and walked. One on Williams. Now Leiter in search of his third win of the year against two losses. Tendonitis in his left shoulder was on the disabled list since then. For the month of June, he's had a 1.52 ERA. Talking about the semi far fetched idea if they are happening, perhaps, if the Mets were to sweep the Yankees. In these next two games split doubleheader tomorrow and having Steve Traxel a tough right hander go against the unpredictable Jose Contreras you know what will happen if that happens two overreactions one's but one by the Mets the other by George Steinbrenner and you can bet on the latter. That's really why a lot of these Yankees kind of roll their eyes when these series pop up because the pressure is squarely on them. Yeah. Almost like we have everything to lose the Yankees. They have nothing to lose and they can come firing at us and the Mets have done just that today. You have to come in their house. And of course you know we're it's hypothetical right now because it's only one game they're comfortably ahead in this game. But if that were to happen here at Yankee Stadium. 
It would be the overreaction that would be the interesting part because uh, the Yankees would not be losing and swept by an ordinary major league team. Williams walks. Jeter coming up. Brought to you by Pepsi Fan Cam, a tribute to the man who turns 30 today. Little Sugar Hill gang for you. All right. Here comes Art Howe, and with two right handers coming up and Botanical getting loose, Howe is going to jog out and ask, it appears, Al Leiter if he wants to continue. A guy, uh, Al Leiter, who has been part of that Sugar Hill group for the Mets, leading the majors in earned run average. Great work by Leiter, 119 pitches on the day, and he is out of gas. Ricky Batalico is coming into pitch with Jeter and Rodriguez coming up. And the Mets leading 9 3 here in the seventh. Pitches for Leiter. Got into the seventh, leaves with a man on, and one out. Talking to Glavin as Batalico misses with ball one. Ball two. Talk to uh, major league hitters, primarily National League hitters, because they're the ones who have to deal with Patalico. But he has everything tight. When he's when he's right, his breaking balls are tight, his sinker is tight, and that is perhaps the best way a pitcher's stuff can be exhibited. A tight movement. Rip down the left field line foul. The captain of the Mets, John Franco, is getting loose here in the seventh. Franco's getting ready for Jason Giambi, who will follow Jeter, Rodriguez, and Sheffield. Jeter did not go. It's three and one. Looks like he held up. Yankees have come from behind more than any major league team, but they are straight uphill this afternoon. Trailing by six. That puts two on. And brings in Alex Rodriguez. Alex Rodriguez. A walk into the day for Leiter and starts the day for Batalico. Rodriguez is not in on the action so far. 0 for 3. And he is hit with a man in scoring position all three times. Coming in at only 213 with his average with runners in scoring position. Mets have been doing a great job moving the ball in and out on Alex Rodriguez, making him think inside and then going away. That's what Leiter did two of the three times he faced him today. That's out of play. Some of the Met veterans have talked to Vitalico about toning down a little bit, not getting so excitable. He has a tendency to let situations get the better of him. He's got good pitching stuff. And instead of getting hot and fuming, trying to come back with a good pitch. And 
I was thinking of that. And that 3 1 pitch to Jeter that just missed. Now he's 0 and 2 on Alex Rodriguez. From Matsui to Reyes, that double play combination gets the Mets out of trouble in the seventh. First pitch to Jose Reyes from Tanyan Sturtz is a strike. After this game, the Yankees win or lose will appreciate the work done by Sturtz. He's working his fifth inning, fourth full, trying to save the bullpen with two games tomorrow between the Yankees and Mets. Reyes is one out of four with an RBI single, a stolen base, and a run scored. You mentioned that three or four innings ago that Sturts would be called upon to do that, and that is exactly what he's done today. Jeter right on the second base bag takes it. Reyes one out of five. The shortstop has Matsui. Can you hear that? Sure. Base hit up the middle by Matsui after the official scorer. <laughs> like a pilot on a plane when you're tired repeats what he says. <laughs> and it's one on one out. Next Saturday the games begin at one Eastern noon Central the Yankees at the Mets the White Sox at the Cubs. Check local listings for the game in your area. We'll take this traveling show to Shea Stadium and the other at Wrigley. Here is Piazza one on one out. Mike's had a nice day. He has two hits and three trips plus a walk an RBI and a run scored. Sturtz is throwing harder as he goes. Piazza checked his swing. One ball, one strike. Upcoming games, the next four. The Yankees at the Mets. Cubs at the Cardinals. Then we'll have the 75th Major League Baseball All-Star Game. On July 13th, the Tuesday night from Houston. And then the Phillies at the Mets. Where will the Mets be sitting in their division four weeks from now? Piazza comes up empty, one and two. Sometimes pitchers will use games like this to experiment. That appeared to be a splitter from Tanyan Sturts and a good one. You don't have the luxury of doing that during the season. Often that's spring training games. That's what they're for. The outs get out of the way. And the crowd reacting like they did about four years ago. When Piazza was hit in the head by Roger Clemens as part of that day night double header. The 2-2. Two -two. Two out. Piazza going after uh, a ball out of a strike zone. But you know when that happened Joe. I didn't think about it until later. That with the split double header. Piazza caught the first game. He was a DH in the second game. And when players have had a chance to catch a game. Have a meal even though it's a light meal. And then play in a game that night. That you're lethargic. And you don't get out of the way of, of balls that you normally would get out of the way of. I think Mike Piazza on any other night would have gotten out of the way of that ball thrown by Roger Clemens. As it stands, he didn't, and the controversy remains. And here it is, uh, less than a month away 
where he will be the battery mate in all probability of Roger Clemens. That's going to be it for Tanyan Sturts. With Cliff Floyd coming up. A chance for the Yankees to see if Felix Heredia can get it together. Sturts gave the Yankees exactly what they needed. He took over in the fourth. He gets the game into the eighth. Although Joe Torre hasn't made the signal yet to the bullpen. Maybe waiting for Heredia to get a little more work in the bullpen. Now talking to Gary Darling. You expect the move and here it is. So trying to buy a few more pitches for Heredia. Felix is coming in the game. Sturt's a nice job out of the bullpen today for the Yankees. Lineups for the 2004 All-Star Game. This one counts, and so does your vote. Log on to MLB.com to cast your AmeriQuest All-Star ballot today. Felix Heredia takes over. It has been a disappointing season for Heredia. It was so for Gabe White. They traded Gabe back to Cincinnati. And if they could bolster their bullpen from the left side, they would do it. But right now, Heredia is the only lefty they feature. Cliff Floyd up one on two out here in the top of the eighth with the Mets on top nine three. Strike one on the inside corner. They got Heredia late last year and liked him enough to sign him to a two year deal. Should end the inning. Cairo throws to Giambi, and that's it for the first seven and a half. Bottom of the eighth. 9 3. The Mets on top. Back after this from your local Fox station. Former Yankee Shane Spencer now in left field for the Mets. They add to their defense. Cliff Floyd is finished for the afternoon, and the first pitch from Botanico is a strike to Sheffield. Gary's been on base three times, twice with. Walks and then a two run home run back in the third. That tied the game 2 2. Since then, for the most part, the Mets have had all the fun. Six runs in the fourth, one run in the seventh. They lead it 9 3. Luis Soho is a third base coach now for the Yankees, and he is way out of the coaching box, and why not? He is defenseless out there. What a valuable player he was. Pardon me for the Yankees driving in the winning run in the 2000 series against Al Leiter. Still one and two on Sheffield. Sheffield should get to the 400. Plateau in the home run department this season. He's at 390, including one here today. He takes ball two. We talked about it some, but Joe, I did not expect the Mets pitching to be as good as it's been through the first 70 games of the season. Leading the majors in earned run average, last in defense, however. It's only been done three times in the history of the game. The defense should get better. With Reyes now anchoring second base. I know he's still learning, but right. they moved so many guys through there. Working with double play partner Kaz Matsui. Wigginton's now back at third, where he played all last year. He played a lot of second base when Reyes was hurt. And lately, Piazza has been away from first, DHing in this series, doing a lot of catching this past week. That's outside. For ball one to Giambi as the Mets put that shift on. The only team to have done it to lead the majors in earn run average and be last defensively were the Dodgers. 1927, 28, and 85. Remember the 85 team with Pedro Guerrero at third, 
Mariano Duncan at second base along with Steve Sachs. That famous clubhouse meeting held by Tommy Lasorda when Pedro Guerrero was asked what he was thinking about before the hitter hit. The idea that every infielder has to anticipate balls hit to him. Pedro said first thing I think about is I don't want the ball hit to me. The Good second, play by Matsui here on the other side of the bag two out. Second thing is I hope the ball's not hit to Steve Sachs. <laughs> Hit well, nice play by Matt Seward. Ball was hit so hard, Matt Seward had to wait for Zeal to get to the bag. He was playing so deep with Giambi up. With well, the base is empty, here's Posada. Metallico did a nice job last inning did walk the lead man he faced put two on but got a rod to ground into a double play then retired the first two here in the eighth. Pretty good breaking ball doesn't get the call one ball one strike. Metallico who started the year in the minor leagues and for a guy who been the closer for a number of different teams Kansas City Philadelphia St. Louis. Sure he had to swallow a little pride to do it. As Posada. Is hit by the pitch. Fastball just nicking the uniform of Jorge Posada. We asked our fantasy question our jury virtual verdict question here are the results. Who would you rather be Jeter Rodriguez or Piazza for a day and the answer was Piazza. Hmm. That's a surprise to me. Rodriguez coming in a distant third as Matsui takes a ball. Been wondering what Steve Horn's been doing here in the booth all day, and now I know logging on and casting his vote to be Piazza. <laughs> A 1 0 outside, two balls, no strikes. There he is. <laughs> 2 0 on Matsui, who's homered. One out of three. I thought Jeter would win that. I did too. Three and zero now on Matsui. On his birthday, lost out to Mike Piazza. Metallico has to throw a strike, and Matsui has to take at least one. The Mets in the ninth will have Hidalgo, Cameron, and Wigginton. The 3 1. Two on, two out. Second walk by Vitalico. That'll bring in Sierra. Right fielder, Ruben Sierra. And there's now one Met fan that's watching this right now. Who's not thinking about the possibility of Ruben Sierra getting a hold of one and making this a three run game and thinking nothing's ever easy, especially against the Yankees? I was thinking the same thing. Now here comes Rick Peterson, who is thinking the same thing. It's one thing for a team to hit their way back into the game, but when you present them with opportunities to get back in the game, that's a different story. And that's what Vitalico has done here in the eighth inning. The closer for the Mets, Braden Looper, is getting loose. Rick Peterson, who is a painter, an avid reader, and a pitching coach, back to the dugout. And Vitalico will work to Ruben Sierra. 
Ruben 0 for 3 today. That was against Lighter. And that was batting right handed. Shattered bat. Matsui throws to first for the out. That'll do it for the first eight innings here at Yankee Stadium. We go to the ninth. The Mets still on top 9-3. We go into the ninth inning and Felix Heredia will work to Richard Hidalgo then Mike Cameron then Ty Wigginton base hit pitch was up and Hidalgo jumped all over it. The center fielder Heredia came into this Mike game Cameron. with an ERA of over eight and a half. He is enigmatic and has been throughout his career. He's still only 28 years old. The guy with that type of stuff, you would think, would be a winner in the big leagues, but not so. Jeter finds that pop up, one on, one out. Wigginton will be the hitter. You think back to those early versions of Joe Torrey's team, the first one had Rivera. Setting up Wetland, but then with Rivera being set up by Nelson and Stanton as a righty lefty combination, that was about as good as there was in the big leagues. Mm -hmm. Strike one to Wigginton. And John Wetland went down to Texas. And fast forward seven years later, and look what the Texas Rangers are doing. If somebody had told you the Texas Rangers would be in first place and the Astros would not and would be a distant fourth. No in way. Late June, I would have thought, uh-uh, brother. What? Texas two games up on Oakland, two and a half on Anaheim. San Francisco's opened up a three-game lead on San Diego. Florida only one game better than Philadelphia although that will change Philadelphia is getting a great game today after losing at Boston last night that'll be a half game and Florida all of a sudden is dealing with a red hot Tampa Bay team. Runner at first, one out, no balls, two strikes on Wigginton. <laughs> what? Uh, I've heard this that if Tampa Bay and Lupinella has told his team that if if they make it to the postseason, that he'll not only shave his head, but he will. Have a bikini wax. Now I don't know what the the male version of a bikini wax is because yeah, male, right. obviously men don't wear bikinis. But right. But you know what I'm saying. But uh, I'll really? tell you, I, I'll tell you, I am not sure it is worth getting to postseason if you're going to be <laughs> bikini waxed. <laughs> that is painful. Again, you're speaking. <laughs> I knew, I knew you were going to ask me that. The first baseman. I've had my ears waxed. You ever had your? Ear, well, you're too young for that. But when you get older, you have to have your ears waxed. Really? Yes. It's what you have to look forward to. That can't be any less painful than. No, but the, wax. no, no. That's right. So I was. What I was doing was. Having had my ears waxed, right. I was You're projecting. I was projecting how painful that would be, and I would not want to tell my team that I would do that under any circumstances. <laughs> That's up and away too. No, is there anything I could present to you that if it were to no. happen? No. No. <laughs> A right hander Jose Parra is getting loose for the Mets out in their bullpen. There's a strike to Zeal. Talk about needing a waxing. You seen the picture of Zeal playing mullet. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh man. That does not like it look like Todd Zeal. I mean he's a good looking guy but that picture's not. There's the regular Todd. And there's Mullen. <laughs> that's Todd Zeal. No. And that's another walk. Zeal on base five times today. Get away, Mullen. See? I'm up down the Talk about a guy needing a wax job. <laughs> Here's Phillips. The Mets have been handed six walks today. Five by the starter Halsey. Should end the top of the ninth. Who wants it? Cairo goes out. Inning is over. The Mets have left eight today. They've scored nine. And after eight and a half, lead it by six. We welcome you back to Yankee Stadium. Here is the great feat of the game presented by Lotraman. The work done today by Al Leiter. Got into the seventh. Six and a third, three runs on five hits. All the runs coming on home runs by Matsui and Sheffield. Did walk four and strike out five. One of those walks to lead off the game, then Derek J Jeter single. And the Yankees with a chance to set a foundation here in their own backyard, but failed to do it in the first. And then Leiter took charge after that. Jose Parra takes over for the Mets. And he will work to the 9 1 and 2 hitters Cairo, Williams, and Jeter. With the Yankees batting down by six. Kenny Lofton is going to come off the bench and bat for Cairo. Lofton made a terrific defensive play in Baltimore this past week, catching a ball up against the wall in center and throwing a runner out at second. His first up against Para. Part of a bullpen now that is working without David Weathers, who was traded to Houston to get Hidalgo. How about the way the Yankees have just manhandled the Baltimore Orioles, winning 10 of 11 resoundingly? Lofton hitting 282. Don Mattingly, a Yankee from 1982 to 95, really forever for the rest of his life now. Mm -hmm. That's a foul ball down the left side by Lofton. Career 307 hitter was Mattingly. And now the hitting coach. Donald Arthur Mattingly, flat out play. His last year was Buck Showalter's last year. That series against Seattle, the division series, which they lost. Down and in from Parra, one ball, one strike. Just looking up on the Yankee scoreboard, the Texas Rangers, who've won seven in a row, two to nothing over the Houston Astros in the second inning. A 1 1 to Lofton. To the right side. Zeal, Para, great play. A fantastic play. As much on the part of Zeal as on the part of Jose Para to get there. Todd looking like mullet after a scrap of food right here. What a play by Zeal. Had that ball gotten through, no way to get the speedy Lofton. There's Mullet. One out, nobody on for Bernie Williams. Bernie's only been retired once. He's one for two with two walks, a double, and a run scored. 
Yankees down to their final two outs a day night doubleheader here tomorrow. And many will watch with great interest at the start during the afternoon of Jose Contreras. That's up and away. Dodgers with an early lead over Anaheim 3 2. It's 2 0 here on Bernie Williams. 9 to 3, the Mets on top. Pop from the right hand of Jose Parra, 92 miles per hour. To the right side and through it, a one out hit for Bernie Williams. The Mets bullpen has. A mixture of young and old. They've got three veterans in Vitalico, Franco, and Stanton. And then they've got four guys who are relatively wet behind the ears. Ober Moreno, Wheeler, Para, and their closer is Braden Looper, who's still really getting used to that role at the big league level. First time we've seen Para, but he's got a countenance on the mound, a, a presence. That's reminiscent of Mariana Rivera, of course, not the stuff, but. Ball one. Jeter. Has two hits and a walk on his birthday. Here's a strike, one ball, one strike. Looper was up last inning, now just seated and watching. Seven straight, the Yankees have defeated the Mets. Jeter is the only guy to play in all interleague series games. Series starting in 97. That's out of play. Strike two on Derek. Taking what they're giving because I'm working for a living. 42 consecutive games played against the Mets for Jeter. And on top of all this, in that 2000 World Series, the MVP of that set. Four games to one victory over the Mets. Here's a one two. Jeter, a late swing, and he's gone. Two out. A lot of Mets fans are staying around to celebrate. Nasty fastball, a cut fastball, speaking of Mariana Rivera, to get Derek Jeter. Alex Rodriguez is the last chance to keep it going for the Yankees. He is 0 for 4. He's had runners on every time. Bernie Williams takes second. No stolen base. That pilot again. Runner at second, two out, no balls, and a strike on the hitter, Alex Rodriguez. 0 for 4 today with runners in scoring position. Another chance. The let's go Mets chant. Not being drowned out very well this time. Alex Rodriguez hitting 286 overall.
Para trying to close it down. All in an effort to get the Mets and now lighter a victory. Strike two. Position for A Rod today. The winner's lighter. The loser was Halsey, now his first major league loss. A three hour, 21 minute game. And the Mets have all the fun today, winning here at Yankee Stadium 9 to 3. That means that the Mets are at the moment two and a half games out behind Florida. Philly's only a half game out. The AL East, both New York and Boston. Losers today. More information on today's game and for the latest information on Major League Baseball, go to FoxSports.com. For Tim McCarver, I'm Joe Buck. So long from New York. A long day of baseball here at Yankee Stadium, and the Mets are back at the 500 mark. They defeat the Yankees 9 to 3. Coming up on the other side of my voice, Jeannie Zelasco and Kevin Kennedy. They'll have it from the Fox Television Center from all of us in the Bronx. So long until next week, Yankees and Mets. We're waiting for a while to get him back. Not going to get Padilla back for a while either as we take you to the game that you just saw. Remember this moment? Gary Sheffield tying the ball game up in the third inning. 11th home run of the year. He's been hot the last five weeks. And then, of course, the Mets opening it up with a six-run fourth inning. Yeah, there's a little mistake in there in a rundown play. Uh, Giambi kind of faked, could have got out of that inning. That let the infield be in right there. Matsui drove one through it. The infield and after that, six runs in the fourth, Jeannie, as you said. And the Mets, of course, snapping that seven-game losing streak to the Yankees. They say they're different. I guess we have to believe them at this point, but uh, this a bit Here's strange. the play we're talking about right here. Now, rundown play, pick off. Okay, you got him. Throw it. Don't fake it. Jason decides to fake it. They can get the runner from third. I've had him in plenty of time. Make the throw. You got the second out. Then you don't have to have the infield in on the base hit after it. Watch the second baseman. See, he would have been back right there. There he is in. If he's back, he's got that ball. Well, those kinds of mistakes open up the ball game for the Mets. Piazza would open it up right there with a the base hit. That drove in a run. Hidalgo just coming over from the Houston Astros. A big base hit. And that would be enough for the Mets with that great pitching staff surprising everybody in Major League Baseball. One great rivalry deserves another. As we talk about the White Sox and the Cubs, no score. The Cubs won 14 of their last 20 games. Crosstown rivals as well. Dodgers and the Angels going at it. Well, Vladimir Guerrero, 19 home runs. Unbelievable. Probably the MVP right now for me. And had a little bit of rain, but they're toughing it out. Bottom two in Texas. Another, the Rangers have a lead. Another surprise team in baseball, the Rangers as we speak. Two-game lead in the West. First place. Why? Because like Blaylock, Teixeira, Soriano, Michael Young. And Blue Jays with the lead is the Expos. Tangle a top three. We asked you earlier. What's the best interleague rivalry? Hands down, Mets Yankees. Not a surprise. 72%. You know, it's you know, you're either a Met fan in New York or a Yankee fan. There's no Japan is a baseball crazy country and over the last 10 years has emerged as a source of talent for the major leagues. Before last season, the Yankees smartly signed Japan's home run hero, Hideki Matsui, who's become an intricate part of this Yankees lineup. I just want to watch uh, Matsui. I mean, it, it's it's great uh, because he's, he's, he's really been taken to. These players love him. Hideki uh, has just shown himself to be a phenomenal hitter and not only just a power guy but he really knows what he's doing at the plate. Hideki has become one of the most consistent players on the Yankee roster but that was not always so. Just a little over a year ago he was struggling to find comfort in his game and new home. This year the crosstown rival Mets have followed the trend of importing from Japan by signing Kaz Matsui. The Mets shortstop earns high praise from the player revered as a baseball god in their home country. I mean I knew him as a player. I mean he was close to a perfect player. I mean, he hit well, he defended well, he had a very strong arm, and uh, he could run well, too. With added media attention and adjustment to a new culture, Kaz's transition to the American game has not come easily either. Struggles at the plate and in the field have led to fan and media scrutiny. 
Now, having been in those shoes, Hideki understands the importance of time and comfort to perform at this level. In the beginning, uh, I had a tough time adjusting and uh, getting acquainted. But um, having been uh, able to play every every single day, every single game, uh, that helped me in terms of uh, getting adjusted a little by little. And I think towards the end of the season, I think uh, I felt uh, pretty comfortable. I think he's just going through that time of uh, really tough adjustment. Uh, he came to a different country, to a different uh, kind of baseball. And uh, it's going to take time to get to know the pitchers. He's learning. Um, you know, he didn't get to play too much in spring training. And um, some days you can tell he just, he's not comfortable and he's not sure what his role is. But now he's being more aggressive. He's, he's still in bases and uh, he's starting to find himself. Being one of only two Japanese players in the New York market, Kaz has a big act to follow. Hideki has found a home here in Pinstripes and it is his, as well as other peers' opinions, that Kaz can do the same in Queens. He does definitely have the skills on both sides of the plate. Good arm, good range. I expect him to uh, continue to mature almost like, uh, you know, a rookie matures into um, a very good uh, big league player. I think he's giving it his best. Um, I think he's giving it his all, and uh, I think it's just going to take a little time for him to bring out uh, the best out of him and uh, bring out his true ability. Take a look at a quick comparison between the two Matsui's in their first 70 Major League games. Hideki Matsui last year hitting about 41 points higher and had far more, R more RBI and far fewer errors than his counterpart, Kaz. Plus, Ken Singleton enjoyed his 21st birthday, leads off tonight for the Mets. Yesterday, Reyes accounted for the only two Mets runs as he smacked a fifth inning two run homer off former Met Corey Lytle in the 6 2 loss to Cincinnati. That was Reyes' first homer since returning to the Mets lineup five games ago. Kaz Matsui will bat second and play shortstop. Now, he's had a difficult time making the transition from Japan and, in fact, was benched by Art Howe yesterday. Matsui has only 18 hits and 81 at bats this month, and his fielding has been shaky as well. Interleague play gives the Mets a chance to save Mike Piazza's knees because they want to make sure his healthy bat stays in the lineup. After suffering through an injury riddled 2003, Piazza has returned to his all-star form with a 319 average and 16 home runs. Now, Piazza is not only putting up monster numbers this season, but since 1997, he does qualify as the top all-time interleague batting average leader with a gaudy 355 average against American League pitching. Fielder Cliff Floyd is the cleanup hitter tonight. He's riding a five-game hitting streak, during which he is nine for his last 21. That's a 429 clip. The newest Met, Richard Hidalgo, just acquired from Houston, will make his Subway Series debut in right. Former Mariner Mike Cameron is familiar with center field at the stadium. He lost a fly ball in the sun yesterday at Shea, and that cost the Mets the game. Ty Wigington is playing the hot corner tonight, while former Yankee Todd Zeal, in his second stint with the Mets, We'll play first, and that leaves catcher Jason Phillips to round out the order.